Listen, I don't know who needed to hear this today. But the Holy Spirit wanted me to give y'all a word of encouragement on today and a reminder. Stop allowing the voices of people control your life. Stop allowing the voices, the influences, the opinions of the people around you to control your life and control your decision making. And stop allowing life to be something that just happens to you. When the Bible says that God has given us dominion. I mean, he's given us lordship. He's give, given us rulership. He's given us the ability to overcome and pursue and accomplish all things through Christ who strengthens us. Come on here. Are y'all with me on today? Listen, so many people do this subconsciously. And a lot of people that I talk to, they'll say things like, oh, I, I don't I don't listen to the uh, um, opinions of other people. I don't let other people influence me. I'm my own man. I make my own decisions. But by looking at their life. Just the way that they speak and having discernment, you can tell that they do it subconsciously and you're so used to doing it that you don't realize you're doing it. Because if your life is not being governed by the word of God, if your life is not being governed by the Holy Spirit, and if you don't even have a strong enough relationship with God to be able to hear his voice clearly, guess what that means? By default, there's automatically going to be another voice that's programming your life that's manipulating your behavior manipulating the way that you think manipulating the way that you behave and the things that you pursue all right or the things that you don't pursue because a lot of times we grow up around people family you know friends best friends ex-lovers and a lot of times it's the people that we love the most and we care about what they think so throughout our lives People always speak these things into our lives and we allow what people speak. We allow what they think about us. We allow their opinions to control us. Right. We allow people's opinions to control what we won't do or what we will do. And a lot of times God has a greater purpose for you, but you will allow the opinions of other people to cause you to walk in fear to the point where now you end up settling for less. And that thing that you settled for, that is not what God had for you, you end up thinking that's. That's your best. You and see, like I said in Genesis 37, when I was talking about Joseph and how he was simply sharing the dream that God gave him to his brothers. All right. He said that my bundles sprung up and he said, your bundles surrounded and bowed to my bundles. This is the dream that God gave Joseph. So a lot of times we grow up around people that are not very confident in themselves. They're insecure. They settle for less. They don't believe that they have any greater purpose in life and they've never chased it. They don't even have the courage or the bravery to chase their dreams in life. So now when they get around a person like you, they're not used to somebody who's confident. They're not used to somebody who is passionate about purpose or, you know, uh, uh, doing something great or impacting, changing the world. So when they hear somebody like you, even though all you're doing is simply being yourself and simply being passionate about your dreams, they interpret that as pride, ego or arrogance. And then they say things like, well, humble yourself. Humble, you think you all that. You think you this and that. Joseph's brothers, when Joseph shared the, uh, his dream with them, what did they say? Oh, you think that you're going to be ruler over us? You think you're going to be some kind of king or something? Basically, what Joseph's brothers were saying is, you know, they, they were basically like, hey, you need to humble yourself. You really think you all that? And see, the people that are around you, that are jealous of you, instead of being inspired by you, Instead of them being confident in themselves and thinking, hey, maybe I should get like him. Maybe I should be confident like Jordan. Maybe I should be confident like this. person. Maybe God has a greater purpose for me, too. Instead, they'd rather be jealous of you and hate on you. And then if this is the only kind of crowd or the only kind of people you're around, that's why I always tell people, get away from mediocre people. If they don't want to come up to your level, you might have to leave them alone because eventually over time, you don't think they're influencing you. But that mediocrity. All right. And that hate and that jealousy and the negative things that people are speaking over you or that friend that you have where every time you have a plan or an idea, they always try to find something wrong with it or find a reason why it won't work. Or they say, oh, you need to humble yourself. And really, it's not that you're arrogant. and It's not that you're prideful. You're just passionate. You're just being yourself. And now if you care about what other people think, what happens is, is you go throughout life being really stiff in your person. And when I say being stiff in your person, so you get around a group of people and you're like, well, maybe I shouldn't be like this or maybe I shouldn't talk like that or say too much because these kind of pe this kind of people right here, they might get offended. They might not like what I say. You know, my intellect might be too much for them. So you end up, again, shrinking yourself down. 
Never dim down your light for anybody. This is what I mean by being stiff in your person. So now your true and raw, authentic self, the amazing, the bright and the vibrant personality that God gave you, you end up dimming that down. You end up hindering your personality because of what other people might think about you. Are you like, should I say this? Should I not say this? Oh, that guy that I talked to yesterday, did I say too much? Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Or maybe I shouldn't wear this because, you know, if I dress too nice, they're going to say I'm being flashy. They're going to say I'm arrogant and this and that, and it'll drive you crazy. Now you lost yourself in the process because you're living for other people's opinions and living for other people's expectations. And now you're allowing the people around you to make decisions for you. And God says, I'm coming to uproot passivity in your life. I'm coming to strip you of passivity. No more just allowing life to happen to you. No more living off of the expectations or opinions of other people. It is time for you to be unapologetically you and to be all who God created you to be. Don't shrink down your light for anybody. Don't walk in fear of what people are think. Don't care about the backlash or the persecution because God will take care of your enemies and he will always take care of the people that speak against you. Right? Understand something. People are always going to try to put you in their small box. Whatever their experience in life is, if they have a very mediocre life experience, they're going to try to pull you into their experience. And guess what? It's going to put a hindrance not only on your destiny, but your ability to be fulfilled just being your raw and authentic self. And you can never be happy or fulfilled being somebody else or being something that God did not create you to be. Are y'all with me? Stop being passive and also stop self-abusing. Mm. This is self-abuse and lack of self-love. Because by people speaking against who you are, speaking against your destiny, not only are they psychologically and verbally abusing you, but if you listen to them, you're subjecting yourself to their abuse. Now you're self-abusing. It is time for you to be you and it is okay for you to be you. It don't matter if the entire world does not like you. Those people are not paying your bills and those people are not going to help you walk in purpose. God has your back. Be you. I love y'all and God bless. Come on, let's get it.